Hello, in this video, we'll cover a very important topic. So many people have asked me and I was not able to make that video because I was following the series. So now the right time has come where I have reached a point where I would cover that. So let me quickly tell you what is that. So in Azure DevOps, generally we create test scripts, right? So for example, I'll take a very simple. So let's say you just have to open a website in Edge, right? And let's say you have to open the same in Chrome and I'm taking just an example in Firefox. So let's say you have these three test cases in Azure DevOps or any test management tool, right? And you have written automation scripts for them, right? So you have three automation scripts for them, A1, A2, A3. So when you run this in pipeline, let's say CI, CD pipeline, when you run this, so there is an HTML report generated where you see these cases as pass or fail. But now the problem comes is that how you will update that in the test management tool, right? So either you have to call the REST APIs, right? And also sometimes there is another problem like, so there could be 100 cases here, right? Which uh, the team has written, but while automating, you will think that, okay, there are two, three cases which are similar, right? So when you will group them here, you will end up having 75 cases in automation scripts. So the issue is right in automation, it is showing 75 as pass and here you have 100 and people are looking at this dashboard where you can't really show that 75 as pass or fail, right? You should update the progress of 100. So let's see. The, so the main problem that I'm trying to address is that how in a CI CD pipeline, when it's run, how you can update the your cases in Azure DevOps. Many people have asked me because there is no direct thing that is available to do this. In the previous video, we have covered that how you can do it in this way, right? If there is no automation, let's say there are 250 cases, right? And 50 are assigned to different different team, team members, right? Now, at the end of the day, if I have executed, let's say 20 and I want to update it, so I have to filter out here that which all belongs to me and I have to mark them as pass fail, which is a tedious task. But there is a utility which I have covered in the previous video by which you can update with a single command all of this 50, right? And now we'll try to achieve the same. We'll go step by step so that you understand it, what we are trying to do and it will make it very simple. I have been using it in multiple projects. So let me show you here as well. So I have taken these examples, like I have just created very simple cases, right? So don't go by the name of the cases and all that. So my intention is to explain you that if you see these are past, right? So one way is that you uh, take on these options and mark them as pass or fail from here, right? So let me fail test. So all of them would be failed. If I do like this, fail test, see? So all of them are failed now, right? So what I have to do is I will run some automations, right? And these should get updated. The reason why I'm saying that is because people look at the dashboard and they want to see that what is the progress in a particular sprint, whether the cases are passed or failed. So for when people are testing it, they can do it from here. But while automation, the script is running in your agent, then how will you build a relationship between them so that whenever you run a script, these are updated. So I already did that. If you see that I uh, like I ran a pipeline, I have already written the code. I will explain you step by step. So let's begin. So if you are coming for the first time on my channel or if you want to remember it easily, you can type my name and add the word testing. You will get this channel, right? And I have various playlists in, under this Azure DevOps. I have covered in very detail. If you want anything that I should cover, do message me or comment on any of these videos right i have covered a playlist about and if you are new and want to start automation and there are some tools so all of this can help you let's uh, come back to the topic and see that what i was actually explaining to you so this is the utility that will take help of which i have covered in the previous video so what it needs is like you can pass three kinds of file to this uh, utility TRX file. TRX file is generally generated if you are have coded in C sharp uh, using .NET, right? So the output file is generally a TRX which has all the results. Right? This JSON or Excel, you can uh, write a custom code, and I'll tell you that how to generate this code because that is the main part of it. That how you will generate that code, and then you can run this utility. 
right so this is a simple command which by which you can install this utility and uh, you can pass on the trx file or the json file like this which has the results in it right so now our main task is to how we can install this in our pipeline and run this right so there is a these are the two simple tasks right okay so now we have two tasks at our end right first thing is install that utility whose name is sinker in the pipeline okay prepare the file that it needs right and run the command okay so i'll directly show you the code and then i'll tell you that how i have created it and the code would remain almost same whether you are doing in python or c sharp or java or whatever language you are using these things will remain same so let me show you the code so we have created a pipeline like you must have seen that in my previous videos i have created a pipeline called as yaml pipeline right so where we run the test first okay now this is the command by which uh, so this sinker utility it needs dotnet version 6 so with this uh, with this like if you want to understand in detail you can have the look at the previous videos so i have i'm using a task in the pipeline by which I am telling that I need .NET 6. So telling this, the system will install that .NET 6 and set all the paths and all. Right after that, uh, I am using a file which I have created in my target folder named as testresults.json. Okay, if you see this file, what it, this file has, it has the test case ID and the status of it. Right, whether the cases pass or fail, so if you logically understand these things, right? So for example, these are the, so what do you need generally, right? So you need these IDs to be updated, right? And this IDs can be there in different test cases because different suits, because a test case can be present in regression. It, it, it first time it can come as a change request CR rights, or it can be present in a sanity suit or regression suit, or even in a user story, right? When first time it comes. So the thing that you need is these three things, which I have highlighted. Okay. Whether, what is the test case ID? What is the status of it? And to which suit ID you want the update to happen, right? Apart from that, it needs these things that what is your organization and what is your project? So if you have these things, let me mark them as number one, two, three, four, and five. And the last thing is pack token. Okay, so how the system will know that because we are doing it via a command line, right? Nobody is attending it. So Gaurav Khurana is not logging in. So how the system will know that you are a valid user. So if you share your credentials, okay, that I'm Gaurav, like it will be a token which will not be visible to anyone because we'll put it in a pipeline. And you tell that, okay, this is the suit ID. This is the project because in dev.azure.com, there are thousands and lakhs of projects because various companies have bought this domain. So you will tell that this is my organization. This is my project. This is the suit ID you have to update. This is the test case ID and here is the result, right? So you got that. What are the inputs that are required? So now what we'll do is we'll prepare this file. So we'll have to prepare this file, which is having the results, test case IDs, right? And we'll have to, and once it is generated, when the pipeline will run, this command will run first. So this command is telling that, okay, in, firstly, we are telling to install .NET agent, right? .NET version, right, six, and then we are installing that utility. Then we are running this command where I have passed my organization, which is, Kurana Gaurav, right? My project name, which is automation. And what is the file, which is having the results, uh, the whether it's pass or fail. This could be three kinds of files. So one is TRX file. It could be a JSON file or it could be an XLS file, right? I, I have preferred JSON because that is better compared to TRX because TRX might not get generated for Java and Python and Excel also like people avoid because sometimes they are using Linux agent where it might not work. Right, and here I'm passing the pack token. And what are the suit IDs that I want to update? So this, I will tell you how we can do this. This is like passing a variable to the pipeline because uh, 
this pack token i don't want to expose even if somebody have my code like i'll check in this code in github they can't uh, steal my token because it's a secret and i have put it in pipeline right these test suit ids these are dynamic in nature because with every release your suit id will change you will create a new suit so these two are dynamic things that's why i have done like this right so you understood that that uh, we have to install sinker and we have to run this command but the main important part of this is that how to create this file test results.json so here i am using java and test ng but uh, if you can see the logic that i will explain that would remain common across whether you are using maybe cucumber with this or or pytest bdd or whatever the logic and the classes would remain same right so what we have to do is we have to generate a file like this okay so what we can do is we can uh, create pojo classes right so pojo classes is like like i'll create a programming structure by which i can create a json right so there are various uh, tasks that we have to do so first task was to install the sinker right second is to create that file third is to run the command right by which the cases are already updated right so for installing the sinker we have seen that dotnet 6 needs to be installed in the agent for which i already showed you the command and the next command is like npm install that command right by the which the installation will happen right and to run the command we have the command which i showed you in the starting and i'll show you again that sinker update uh, com command is there right so that is there when i started the video this is the command that we have to run so it need this file which is a variable account will like your organization would remain same and your project would also always mostly remain same right and the token is generally active for an year so that is also same so the only part is this so i'll explain you step by step how we can prepare this file right this file is the most important part so we'll learn how to prepare this JSON file, right? I have pasted this here. So to make it uh, simple, uh, if you see that it, this is an array, it is an array of test cases, right? Because generally we run so many test cases. So we have grouped them together and there will be one or multiple suit IDs. But uh, Nagarjuna, who has prepared this utility, he has given this structure on the page of the utility that is the utility named Sinker, right? So you can even customize it. So for example, if this test case belongs to a particular suit ID, so there is a way you can customize this JSON and put over here, right? But I have never tried that because this uh, seems simple and this is generally solved the use case, but uh, I can still show you. So if we go here, uh, if you see, he has given various structures like test suit ID can come at this level as well, right? So maybe you want test case ID seven to be updated only in suit ID eight, not nine. So you can give like this, but the simpler version is this. So we'll focus on this, that how we can prepare our test cases of array, right? So there is a concept of Pojo, uh, plain, uh, plain old Java object, right? By which programmatically we'll create a structure which can easily be converted into JSON, right? So uh, like I will get, uh, I'll just create a simple structure by which you can create this very simply. So what we'll do is we'll copy this and I'll paste on this site, JSON converter, JSON to Pojo, right? I can drop the link for this, right? And I'll click on this convert. Okay, so it has given me two classes. So the one class is test case class because it is this is a smaller object which is contained in in test cases right so what it has told is test case id and outcome and at higher level because this is a combination of two things suit id and test case so it has created an array list of test cases so these two classes we'll paste it in our code so i'll show you the code which i have already written i have created a folder called as ado where if you see that I have pasted the same code that we have a root, right? And we have a test case. So same thing I have pasted now. Now comes the other thing. The thing is that how we'll do that, right? Because when you run a suit, there would be a test case ID. There would be an outcome of it. 
So we can use the in this case test ng annotation if you are unit if you are using n unit or cucumber you can use their annotation like after each method. So yeah. after each method I will collect this that what is the test case ID of my current test case and how I will put that I'll explain you that as well. Right. Similarly, I'll capture what is the outcome of that test case. So let's say 100 test cases are running. After each test, I'll pick up the test case ID and I'll pick up outcome. Right. And after all the test cases and this is run, right, I have this list prepared. I will just add the suit ID, which is common for all of them, this test case, and my file is ready. Right. So hope it is clear. If not, that like we'll see the next steps and it will become clear. Right. And I have used chat GPT to create all of this, right? Because I'm not an expert in and remember all the syntax of that. So let's begin what I have told you, right? I will come to this single instance. What is this? But hope so far it's clear. So what we are trying to do as of now is trying to create this file programmatically so that once our automation suit is complete, we have this file and we run the sinker command and the ADO is updated. Okay. So, so far we have discussed these two classes, test case class, which is a subset or an object of the array, main array, and this root class, which is having the suit ID and the array list test cases, right? So let's come to this. So how we will uh, do the mapping, okay? So as I uh, told you earlier as well, right? We need this test case ID for each test case. Let's say this is the test case, then this is the ID, right? So that we know that, okay, whether it is pass or fail. So this is the information we need. This is the information we need, right? And this we are passing it dynamically with each run. But this we need to extract, right? So uh, what I did and what you can also do is, uh, firstly, I took the help of chat GPT. Let me show you. So I have asked chat GPT custom tagging in te test ng, right? So how we can tag a test case. So let's say this is a test case. So it told me you can use groups. By groups, you can tag a test case. Okay, so I can, like you must already be using for segregating your test case as P1, P2, right? Those kind of things. So, uh, and this syntax only vary, but the logic remains the same across all the various uh, various frameworks that we have available, right? It told that, right? And now I told that, okay, I have put the value, but how I will extract it, right? So it has told me that you can use these groups and uh, put this on test start, right? You can just uh, pass on this uh, that they have given uh, the result uh, object by which you can get the groups, all the groups, right? So, but I might be having multiple groups. I might be putting priority test cases and so many tags over that, right? So for that, I have written a custom logic, right? So. And how can I use the group value in after method? So it has explained me and I have created a dedicated video like where I have used chat GPT, how I have used. So you can have a look at that. Now let's come back to our method that how I did that. So first of all, like the way chat GPT has suggested, I have put the groups on my test case and I have given a tag called as test case underscore and that ID, right? So if you see my ID is 22, 26 and 27. So here is 22 for my other case, it's 26 and another case, it's 27. Okay. In my after method, which I have called that now let's create the results.json. Okay. Whatever the code chat GPT has given me that I'm trying to get the groups. Basically, I'm trying to get these values. Okay. And then I am, I, I got these values in groups, which is a array of strings, right? And now I am parsing one by one to see that which one contains test case so that I can get my particular test ID, right? And I'm replacing that test case underscore so that I, I'm left with the number, right? So now I got the test ID number, okay? And also whether the test case was pass or fail because this is the after method, after that case has been run, right? After the test has been run. So it will tell me whether it's pass or fail and I'm trying to print that, right? So that I know that what is the result, okay? And uh, because, uh, it it re, it returns a value success and failure, right? But in ADO, we have the value pass and fail, right? We don't have failure word, we have failed, okay? And the requirement of this is that they want passed or failed, right? So based on the utility, we have to 
do the customization. So here I, I have created a variable called a string, right? So if it is success, I have made it as passed. If it is failure, I have made it as failed, okay? So now if you see that with this after method and with the help of grouping, we got the two things that we wanted, right? We got this test case ID, which we have used via grouping. And this test ng has returned. If you are using nUnit or PyTest or whatever, right? So they all they all provide this custom methods, even BDD or SpecFlow. All of them gives the outcome of this. But only thing is this will change. Here I am receiving this I test result. There it would be something else, right? In SpecFlow, it's context, feature context, right? So now I have both the two things. What I did is I created a object of this class test case, and I have put it as pass fail test id right so now comes an important part so this file is common right so there could be instance that uh, the test cases are running in parallel right but we have to create only one file right we don't want to create uh, multiple files right so we have used that uh, singleton pattern right so there what we do is for a class we will just create one instance and if system tries to create one more it will not allow Okay, it will just have one instance so that whatever data we are creating that will be appended only in one. Okay, right. So let's see what I did here in single instance. So I have uh, created a class called a single instance, right? What it has, it has a list of tests. Okay, so what we are trying to do is we are trying to create this array. Okay, and this array should be appended to the same instance, right? So these all the test cases should be should remain together. So that's why uh, we have put list of test, right? And I have created an instance of it. And here, if you see that it's a static, right? So if it first time, this would be null and a new object would be created for this class, okay? And next time when, every, when anybody calls this get single instance, this would never be null and the same instance would be called, okay? So what I'm doing is I, I call this instance and in this, what I'm doing is there is a method I have created called as add test case. So uh, I, I'll share this code and you can maybe uh, try to analyze it. Then you will get it very easily. It's not a very hard thing. Okay. So I just creating one instance and in add test case, I am, I have created a list of tests and I am doing an add, right? Just like a, it's a list where I'm adding a value. Okay. So what will happen is after each test, there would be an instance of a class, single instance, which is having test case. And we keep on adding test cases and its result, right? So at the end, when all the test cases are prepared, this portion is ready. So we have prepared one portion of our file with this. Let's see where this function method is called, okay? So if you see add test case, so once I have the things I have added to this, okay? So after all my cases are executed, then I have written an after suit, okay? And if you see this code is also prepared by chat GPT, but you need to know the basics that what you have to ask chat GPT, right? So let's see what I have asked chat GPT. Okay, now I'll show you. So now come the root class because this is ready. Test cases we have prepared using single instance. Now we need to pass a suit ID and this, Right, these two things are ready and they are ready programmatically, right? There is no JSON file in the picture. Okay, so I have asked chat GPT that how to convert Pojo class to JSON because we already had the class, so it has told me about Jackson library. So there are two libraries I, I, I was aware about uh, Jackson and JSON. I want to use JSON because it's comparatively simpler to use, though Jackson provides more facility, it can convert XML files as well, right? So it has given me this simple code that like if you have a, a JSON, right, you just have to put this library in your POM file. And then if you have the JSON file, you can just create from JSON. And if you have Pojo class and you want to convert, then the command is to JSON. Okay. So it has uh, given me both of them. Okay. And then uh, like once we have the JSON file, I want to output it to target folder, right? So that even I have asked uh, chat GPT that create a file from string in Java. So we have that JSON string and it has shared the code. Okay, let's go back to our code. So now what we are doing is we created an instance of that root class, right? And that I am putting suit ID as zero instead of anything because uh, in our YAML file, 
we have given this that as a variable i'll show you that okay and then we are adding the test cases which are already stored in the single instance right the single instance will get all the test cases to us so now root class has the suit id and the list of test cases right now what we are doing is we created an instance of json and we are converting the root uh, which is a programming object right it's not a json file so i am doing this and json test results will get so i have printed this also so once i'll run i'll show you that that it will get printed on the screen right and after that this string i am putting it in a target folder as test result.json so that it could be used when we'll run in pipeline right and then i am just writing it to using this code that write the contents of the file and just closing it okay so now the file is ready now if you have any doubts you can just uh, comment me that if if you are facing any problems while generating this file this three classes would remain as it is whether you use java python or just the syntax would change right but you can as it is copy paste this adio folder and do some little modification if there is a need be right and your file would be prepared okay now let's run it and see it first let me run it locally to show you i am just uh, deleting this file okay let's delete this file and i'll run the command here mbn clean test so similar thing we'll try to reproduce in the pipeline to see that whether the three tests that we created whether they are updating the results in ADO or not. So the tests are running and you will see that this target folder will get cleared because I have given this clean also in the test. Right, if you see that now the target folder is not having all the email reports and all that stuff. And also you can, instead of generating in target folder, you can generate in some other folder and publish that. So publishing I have explained in the previous video, like how we can publish uh, the artifacts that are getting generated. So here I'm publishing my whole target folder, right? So as a result, test result.json file will also be published. If we want to publish specific things, we can give specific path. And in the previous video, we have also seen that how you can see the HTML report. We'll just go to the build agent also, and I can show you what's happening over there. So if you see, I have three tests and the test was simple, right? Because the intention is not to show you the test, but how things happen in the CI CD pipeline in Azure DevOps, right? The tests are very simple that the same, I'm opening my blog, which is udgl.com in Chrome browser right also in edge browser and in firefox browser okay and it's printing all that stuff if you see that it has printing this file so all my three cases have passed here right but it has not updated it because this update command sinker is i have put it in the pipeline right so if i have to do this locally i'll have to copy this and run it here okay i can copy this and I can run, but the thing is I'll have to pass the pack token and test suit ID. Okay, so let's go to the pipeline. Okay, if you see, let me refresh this page. Okay, I'll reset all of this to active. Okay, now all of my tests are active. So this open in Chrome, open in Edge and open in Firefox should get updated when I'll run my pipeline. And in the previous video, I have shown that how we can create a pipeline, right? How we can run DevOps, Azure DevOps code or your GitHub code can be run daily. Okay, so this is my pipeline. I can just show you the same code which I have written over there is here as well. Okay, I have checked in this code. You can refer to previous video if you don't know that how to do this, right? So this is the installation of .NET 6, right? And then there is installation of Syncer tool. Syncer tool details are here. This I'll give a link in the video. And this file we have understood in this video how to prepare this file. And these two things, which I'll tell you now, that how you can do this is click on this variable button and click on this plus button and you can create something called as pack token. 
right? And test suit ID, since I have already given, so it's giving me here. If you see that, whatever name you give, you give dollar and in brackets in your YAML file, it will be replaced, okay? And while adding your thing, you can just tell that this value is secret, right? So what will happen is when you will type anything, it will not be visible, okay? So that is the advantage of token. So nobody can come on this and check it out what I have given at, as a token, okay? Right, so I have given test suit ID as 21. So where is my 21 ID? This is 33, okay? This one is... 30. Okay, this my suit ID is 33, right? So I will update this value to 33, okay? Now I have saved it, right? So in the previous video, we have created this pipeline, right? I just updated, I've just added these two things, pack token and test suit IDs. So let me run. Uh, and when we run it for the suit ID 33, the test cases 22, 26, and 27 should get updated with the results, right? Let me click on this run. Yeah, main branch. Okay, let's run it. So I'm running this pipeline. And uh, let me explain you that uh, we can give names also. Like if you see display name, this was not there in the maybe the earlier videos. We can give a name to this task that what it is doing. So I have given a custom name that running sinker to update. You can give any name, right? Getting the target folder as an artifact, HTML report, right? Whatever name you want to give, you can uh, give to this. Okay, this is a Java version 11. So if you are running in 17, 21 or eight, right? You can mention that accordingly. All this I have explained in the previous one here, you can put Ubuntu also, but I'm using Windows. Right, so it's running as of now, nothing is updated, right? Let me refresh this page because my tests are not run yet. Okay, let's uh, wait for this. Now, if you see here that I'm having the name as installing .NET version for using Sinker, right? Because Sinker utility needs .NET 6 and this agent might not have that, right? So that's why we are installing it. If you are using some agent which is already having .NET, so you can avoid this. So it's downloading all the things, right? Maven command is running. It will download. I have put the latest Selenium version, which is 4.15 as of now, zero. 4.15.0. Okay, and last time when I noticed that one of my case was failing, which was for Firefox. It might fail again, right? If you see now, it has started running, started Chrome browser. Okay, this command I have given in my test. Let's see, starting Chrome browser. Okay, so it has started Chrome browser. And also you can uh, maybe run via test ng file as well, right? So maybe you can pass it here uh, in the YAML file, right? Instead of giving test, we can give minus D command and give the test ng file if you want to run like that. Okay, let's see, wait for this. So if you see now, it has run the Edge browser and Firefox browser and it has printed all the messages that we have given, right? And even if you see this file is even prepared, it has passed all the cases, right? All the three cases have passed, which were passed locally. There are no failures. And now it is installing that uh, .NET version and Still, if you see that these are not updated because the previous, this job is yet to run, right? Running sinker to update and this command will take even less than one minute. If you see eight seconds only it took, okay? And HTML report is also there. Let's see the HTML beautiful report, which comes here, which I have explained in the previous video, right? All of them are passed. We are able to see. Also, you can go to this uh, test and put the filter as passed. Here also you will see that uh, the test cases have passed, right? So let's see the main thing for which we are here. I'll go here and I'll refresh this page. Okay, you see they are passed and to verify that whether somebody has not done that, right? You can check it out that, okay, that where all it's updated. And if you see my name is written because the personal access token belong to me, right? So you can create with a particular person, the personal access token and from where to create it. 
in the previous videos I have explained in personal access token, you can come here, click on this new token, give this permission, read and write, give some name and copy that token, right? That token you can give in the pipeline. Okay, let's see whether, if you see these three only are updated, right? And I can see that in which test plan it's updated. So it's part of master test plan also, right? So I uh, hope you like it. And if you have any doubts, you can leave a comment and uh, sorry for the delay in publishing this video. It was in my to-do list for a long time. And I'm also feeling relieved after creating this videos. And I'll personally reply to all the people who have asked me, like whom I remember that they have asked me. So please subscribe to the channel and leave any comments. And thank you for watching.